Hey, good morning. It's the weekend. Now, I hope you plan to be at E-Free Church Sunday. It's in Gathering Sunday. We got so many things lined up. There'll be food stations. There'll be worship. There'll be a sermon. We're going to dedicate children to the Lord. We're going to dedicate Operation Christmas uh, Child Boxes. We're going to also see close to 20 people baptized at our Gaylord campus and take our special in-gathering offering. It's going to be the best Sunday of the year. You don't want to miss it either in person at our Gaylord or Sioux campus or live online. Don't miss this Sunday at E-Free Church. Well, I want to give one more question this week uh, about the questions you've given me. And this one comes from Melanie, and I like it. She said, my question is regarding David. I really struggle with sermons on David and how he is seen as a man after God's own heart. How can this be? How can he be so favored when he was an adulterer and a murderer and both sins were premeditated? And Melanie, you are right. He was an adulterer, he was a murderer, and his sins were premeditated. So how in the world can he be known as a man after God's own heart? Well, understand, David was seen as a man after God's own heart long before he had an affair with Bathsheba, long before he had her husband Uriah killed. God selected David as king when he was just a shepherd, and it was due to the fact that as a young man, he was a man after God's own heart. That's exactly what Samuel tells King Saul in 1 Samuel 13, verse 14. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out for himself a man after his own heart. He's speaking of David. And the Lord has appointed him as ruler of the people because you, Saul, have not kept what the Lord commanded. This is also spoken of in the New Testament where a definition is given. What does it mean to be a man after God's own heart? What does it mean? Well, here's the answer. A man after God's own heart is a man who does God's will. Let me say that again. A man after God's own heart is a man who does God's will. We see that definition in Acts 13, verse 22. They asked for a king. God gave them Saul, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And after he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, concerning whom he testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do my will. What does it mean to be a man after God's own heart? You do God's will. Now, Melanie, to be a man after God's own heart does not mean you're perfect. No one would be a man after God's own heart if that were the case. To be a man after God's own heart means you do God's will. So how could David, after committing an affair with Bathsheba and having her husband killed, how could he be a man after God's own heart? Well, think about it this way. While these were definite sins, what did David ultimately do afterwards? He repented. He repented. So think of it this way. Point number one, a person after God's own heart is a person who does God's will. Point number two, when we sin, what's God's will? For us to repent. What did David do after he sinned? He repented. He did the will of God, which meaning even though he was a sinner, because he did God's will in repenting, he was still a man after God's own heart. So here's the question I want to ask all of you this morning. Are you a man or woman after God's own heart? Do you do God's will? Let me pray. Father, make us all please individuals who love you and follow your heart. May we do your will. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, next week is Thanksgiving week, so we're going to be breaking from questions, and we're going to be talking about some passages in the Bible that will help us with gratitude. Have a good weekend. We'll see you Monday morning.